and all that. Okay, we are official. We are Hello. official. <laughs> Hi, well, Leanne. Hi, everyone. Let's, let me just to go put on the <laughs> land. If, if I did not have my glasses on, I could not see a thing in front of me. Like it's uh, where is the. Well, but you you need glasses. But I just have readers, you know, so the names. Oh, no, no. I need to have readers too. Look at I me need now. to have readers to find my glasses. <laughs> That's gonna... why he's got me. Yeah. yeah, so you can tell him exactly where what's happening, where it's happening. Hold on one second. Let me just, um, I need, I was going to change my name because, um, hold on one second. Let's see if I can do that. Yes, I can. I can do that. It just takes a little while. Look at that. I love when this stuff happens. Hi, everybody. Um, I think uh, Team Guidely should go first. And welcome, everyone. No? Is well, we, 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 this is uh, the, the settings within the community are definitely less uh, formal. Ooh, uh, less formal. Less, less formal, but we, we welcome everybody, and especially <laughs> our, our dearest friend and guide and uh, teacher uh, and uh, fashionista, Miss Liana Shauli. Oh, thank you. Who, who is doing the work inside out and outside in. So uh, really excited to have you today, Liana, and uh, we appreciate your continuous support and enthusiasm and believe in what uh, in what we do. I have a lot of enthusiasm. I know, I know. So we're in for a treat today. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Shannon, for um, inviting me. Thank you, Amir, for inviting me. Thank you. Um, I had a wonderful conversation with Jerome today, which was uh, like the precursor to this. So we had a little bit of a chat. The first thing I want to do, and I don't want to spend a lot of time going into my history or does anybody need some accolades? Does, is it, if you need accolades and you need me to like roll out my CV, then tell me if you don't, then we're just, we can just go dive right into it. Are you all good with that? Just give me a thumbs up. You're good with that. Okay. I'm going to talk a lot about God. Are you good with that? You good with that? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Great. So the first thing I want to ask is, this is not, I am not sitting up here on my high horse, even though I'm sitting on a pretty high chair with a purple background and a pink and flowers. These are for you guys, by the way. Um, I want this to be a conversation. This is a conversation. This is not that I want it to be a conversation. This is a conversation. This work cannot happen in a vacuum, just like our lives do not happen in a vacuum. So, um, I would like you to jump in. I like being interrupted, so please interrupt me. Do not say I'm sorry when you interrupt me, just interrupt me, okay? And the reason for me asking you to interrupt me is because uh, passion in conversation doesn't wait till the end of the sentence or to 10 minutes later. That's not how life works. <laughs> so if you have a question- I'm gonna use that excuse, I really like it. <laughs> what? Passion in a conversation doesn't wait. <laughs> no, it's like freaking telling passion, somebody, no, don't have the orgasm have now. No, 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 don't have the orgasm now. Wait, wait, wait for another 10 minutes and then have your orgasm. No, it doesn't work that way. The truth is that life happens in the moment and stuff and shit and joy and passion and orgasm show up when they show up. So, you know, you can't just wait. So just interrupt me, okay? That's the first thing. And that's like a very important piece of this. And the second piece of this is uh, the foundation of image therapy, which I'm going to ask you about in just a second, is um, the agency and the capacity to be with life exactly the way it is and exactly the way it isn't. And that starts with our masterpiece, with this masterpiece that we get to live in. Okay. We are spirits that get to have a human experience in this body so the embodiment of living life in all its glory and all its greatness and all its joys 
and all this jealousy and laughter and fun and taste buds and earlobes and the small of a woman's back, all of it lives in, in this body, every single piece of it. So I want to just ask a question. And the question is, how many of you actually, when you heard the word image therapy, do you even get what that means? Like, what is that healing art of image therapy? It's an art. It has got healing in it. It's got image in it. It's got therapy in it. So just please undo your mic. And I'm going to take two or three of you. Give me like a few sentences. Did you do any Googling? Did you do any stalking? Did you go and find the color of my underwear last Tuesday on Instagram? What did you do when you heard this? So be honest. This is this is this whole conversation is about transparency. That's what the healing art of image therapy is, is how can I be with life exactly the way it is, exactly the way it isn't? Transparent. Can I show the world who I truly am with all my foibles and all my fun and all my fantastic. Well, I'll jump in and just share why I was interested in speaking with you earlier today. Yeah, and that's because as a gay man, the gay world is very image conscious. Yeah. It's all about how you look. And, um, and I, for one, don't necessarily have, I'm not everyone's type or whatever. And so I'm learning, going through a process of learning to love my body and to feel good about how I show up in the world. Okay. And we spoke today about how I use clothes to hide, you know? That's what I, most people do, Jerome. Yeah. And so that's what piqued my interest is, love it. you know, being more authentic. How do I show up as love me? It. Love it. Love okay. it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you for being, going first. <laughs> Hi, Liana. Hi. Um, actually, I have, um, I know another lady who specifically uses a color palette to uh, drape people, not to look better for others, but to see what feels, what colors feel right to them inside of themselves as part of their journey, which reminded me a little bit of when I saw your image therapy, I thought this is probably a small piece of it. And I am in the midst of going to the, the second, third step in creating a visual image for myself that is more authentically me. I moved from Land's End to Clingy Knits when I, I had my, my spiritual awakening and now I really need to do color. I mean, like patterns and color and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. when I heard about you, I was like, oh, I need to see this whole picture of what this is about mm -hmm. and how it fits in with the insides as well as the outside. Yeah, I, I love that you're, it's so interesting because Jerome talked about fashion, you're talking about color and I'm not gonna do any of that today. <laughs> Everyone says, oh, you're a stylist. Ooh, I'm gonna talk to you about fashion and you're a custom clothing designer and you've made clothes for $25,000 gowns for uh, royalty and Cher and Diana Ross. Ooh, I'm gonna show you how wonderful I am about blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, mm, yes, it's about clothes, but it's not really about clothes. Clothes are really important and they're your second skin and color is even more important. Yet the beginning of image therapy is, is the inside of your masterpiece. That's why it's the healing art. I can come in and I can put a $5,000 suit on either Jerome or on Amir and I can go to Bijan and get the most amazing thing. If I put a very, very expensive piece of property on this masterpiece, and the inside of this masterpiece is kind of like this. Watch closely. What does what did that just tell you? Where did I just go? No, you're shaking not, your head, but non-expressive. Like shy. No, I, I didn't I didn't change color. I didn't change design. I didn't change my body structure. What just happened? Body language. My thoughts changed. I went from knowing who I am, trusting who I am, understanding the greatness of God that's inside of me to <laughs> 
to not to abdicating it okay i didn't change anything else except my thoughts and my willingness to show up as amazing as i know i have the capacity to be in the world and we all do that now some of us toggle between doing that and being radiant and then going away and then coming back to being radiant my wish for you and the reason why i created this work most of my life i'm going to be 63 next month most of my life has been spent creating processes and understandings and learnings and teachings and their greatness no matter what is going on in their world in order to learn image therapy and for it to be a healing art, you, all of you, all of us, have the ability to commit, because commitment precedes anything and everything, to commit to living a greater life, to commit to being greater than your circumstances. Because shit is gonna hit the fan all the time. And I'm not saying shift, shift comes after. First comes shift. No, first comes shit, then comes shift, <laughs> right? So we're all in the mode of shifting. However, if we're all naked and we don't have our second skin, the image part, the deep inner part of the healing art is going to come into the room before you do. Your thoughts come into the room before you do. They come in your body language. They show up with less than or more than or arrogance or chin up or I'm better than you or my God, they're gonna hate my ass. What if they see my big ass? What about my belly? What if my belly walks in before I do? What if he, what if I get naked and I wanna have sex and he doesn't like my scars or she doesn't like this or my whatever? Those are all conversations that are not coming from the outside. They're coming from the inside out because we are giving the outside permission to look at us in a way that we would never allow anyone to look or talk about our children or our loved ones. Yet we totally do it to ourselves. That's why this is called the healing art of image therapy. But I wanna hear from one more person before I continue. Who's, who's one more person? One more brave soul. Um, one more person. <laughs> I definitely I I did a little bit more research because I you know helped plan the event but it was so interesting to me because it resonates so deeply I find that in the past few years especially my style has changed so much and it's the it's the outward expression of what's going on inside um, so I was just really, really excited to be here and to, you know, to learn from you about your experience in this field and, you know, how to apply that, how to take what's in here and, you know, and bring it out and also how to, you know, really be able to, to be in touch with what's in here and to feel confident in what's inside and making it manifest on the outside for everyone to see. So thank you so much. I'm excited. That's so beautiful. Do you have a question, Hannah? No, I don't think so. Not okay. yet. Okay, good. Does anybody have a question before we get started? Before you all interrupt me? No? <laughs> I'm going to, I want to read something to you. Um, let me see if I can, in, in this complicated world of my computer, let me see if I can actually find it. Um, because I had opened it and you know how we are in our computers and then we don't, we can't find it. Um, and the reason why I want to read to you uh, is because I want to show you a piece of my life. Um, that, hold on, see, now it's not working, but that's how technology is. <laughs> I want to show you a piece of my life. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not going to read it. I'm going to show you a piece of my life that has to do with um, a space in which we don't want other people to see something. 
And I can do that without reading to you. Reading is the hardest thing for me. I am severely dyslexic. I, I simultaneously translate into three, four different languages. But then if you tell me to read something, it's really hard. And that's the thing I don't want people to know about me. And I share that with you, and I will find this piece in a minute, but I share that with you. It's because we use clothing as armor because we have made up a story that the world is not allowed to see who we truly are. By the way, as a mentor, um, I, I've just spent two years basically curled up on my carpet crying. That's another thing I don't want anyone to know about me. Someone who's as strong as I am and shows up in the world as bright and brilliantly. I didn't want people to know that I was curled up in a ball, crying, sad, depressed, on the verge of driving my car off the cliff. I didn't want, I didn't want anyone to know that. The reason why I'm sharing it with you is because I'm still in it. This has not gone away. That's the aftermath of not having been with people, not hugging, not kissing, not having any tactile contact with humanity, not breathing the same air. Why am I sharing this with you? Because the foundation of image therapy is being able to be with whatever is here, big ass, small boobs, big penis, small penis. And I'm saying this very clearly because they, these are physical aspects of our life and our world that are woven into these baloney stories that do not make any sense, that aren't real, that don't have any validity to them. And your big butt, long hair, white skin, dark eyes, green eyes, blonde, whatever, is not the value of who you are. We make up these stories. The world has decided that Marilyn Monroe in the 40s, 50s, 60s, whenever she was here, who was a size 14, was beautiful. Okay? And then suddenly it's en vogue, and then suddenly it's out of fashion. Suddenly it's in fashion to do this, then it's in fashion not to do that. So I've chosen this path of clothing being part of the teaching path because clothing lives on this masterpiece 24 seven. Clothing is closer to you than your lover. It is closer to you than your breastfeeding child. It is the symbiotic relationship that we have and the language we speak to the world. It contains all the do's and don'ts and stories and contracts that we've made with a child that comes out of its mother's bedroom with a pair of G-string undies on its head and that they, mom, look at me, I got a new hat. And all the mother has to do is do this. She doesn't even have to say anything. And that three-year-old child makes a contract in that moment, I can't do that. That's not right. Shuts it down, makes a contract. I cannot show up creative. I cannot show up with this piece of fabric on my head. A child doesn't know what, what a G-string is or underwear. A child doesn't know what it goes into its parents' bedroom and fumbles through the drawers and finds a dildo and comes out and says, look, I found something really cool that the parents get angry or all of that is not in a child's realm. And yet there is where we get all the inner art of image therapy. Those are all pieces to the puzzle that we create as we grow up and then we become 20 and 30 and 40. And there is a human being that still is a bud has not yet turned into a blossom because the bud says, I cannot bloom because when I bloom, someone ain't gonna like it. Someone isn't gonna like this piece. My friend Debbie Ford wrote a beautiful book 
God bless her soul, she wrote a beautiful book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, in which she talks about us being a castle. This masterpiece is a castle. We have 55 different rooms. They're all designed different with different chandeliers and lights and velvet curtains and beautiful crystal toilets. And every time somebody walks into your castle, they diminish a room, they diminish a chandelier, they diminish a vase. This is what humanity goes through. We give other people permission to diminish a piece of who we are. And that way we abdicate one little piece, one finger, one digit at a time. We let other people tell us who we are. Who can relate to this? Does anyone, can anyone relate to this? Yes, yes. When I talk about this, please share, if you can, what have you abdicated? Which part of yourself have you abdicated? Have you chosen to give away and not showing the world? Because if you did, it would be too horrible. Anyone? Okay, I'll, I'll say. Um, Hi. Hi. Hi, thank you. Thank so, you so much for yeah. going. This is very courageous of you. Thank you. It's feeling edgy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is good. We like edgy. <laughs> well, it's, the, it's the edgy part that leaders go to. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Thank you. So I abdicated um, my right to be seen, my visibility, my... Um, greatness. My greatness, my greatness. I hid it for a very long time. Hid, hid, hid. Lots of, lots of masks, lots of mirrors, lots of clothing that um, had me look... I worked on Wall Street for a number of years. I dressed like a man pretty much that whole time. Um, but as a young child, I shut down that part of me that was this, wanted to sing and dance and move and because it wasn't pleasing to- To whom? To my mother. Ah. Yeah. So where's your mother now? She is on the other side. She's an angel in heaven. And she is cheering me on <laughs> in having broken out of the, of the mold and to become myself. So she is my wing, she's my wings now. How beautiful. Yeah. So do you remember what the price, what was the price that you paid for not being yourself? Was abdicating my choices around how I lived my life. My artistic side completely was, um, my, my ambition or my drive to be somewhat different, you know, to, 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 to go a different route, probably that was abdicate, that was abdicated. I paid, a, I paid a lot of prices in terms of my expression. So my expression of who I am in the world um, was not, was heavily cloaked in somebody other, in masks, probably until I was 50, you really, and so I started to um, slowly dismantle the identities um, and I'm you know I'm also in process as we all are all the time <laughs> what can I can I ask you some questions of course what's your relationship to the relationship that you have to clothing your relationship to the relationship that you have to clothing what's the relationship to the relationship that I have to clothing do, do you understand the distinction Yes, I do. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, Let's hear it. So it's interesting. I I I use clothing. My the, I use clothing as a way to express in some sometimes and sometimes I use clothing to mask so sometimes I use it and again it depends on this cycle I'm in or this phase of the moon who knows but sometimes I use it to um sort of 
establish my, you know, my femininity, my queendom, my, my greatness. Okay. And sometimes I, I use it to hide, I, you know, I use it to hide or to, um, to, as a, as a mask. I guess it's always being used as a mask in some way. So I, you, I sorry to interrupt you. Were you always aware of that? No, no, for sure. You, no. So, so now that, uh, how long did it take you 50 years to get out of that mask? Yeah. Pro well, you know, I think when I was younger, I was a punk rock. I used it to rebel. I was a punk rocker. I had, you know, pins and da, 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 da. I used it to rebel. I had blue hair. Then in my 20s, well, my 20s, I wasn't well. So I spent most of my time in sweats. <laughs> and then in my 30s, I came here, suddenly found myself on Wall Street and used it to fit into a norm that was, um, you know, that's, yeah, to, to, be, to be to fit in. And then I left Wall Street in 50, and then I completely expressed myself through my clothing. So there's been, every decade has brought a new relationship for me. Okay, so you said a couple of things that I want to go back to. One thing you said, you said I was on Wall Street and I dressed like a man. Yeah. Are you a man? Do you identify as a man? No, no I don't identify as a man. Do you, however, have masculine energy? Yes, you do. Yes. You can yeah. apply that. So this whole concept, and the reason why I'm asking you what's your relationship to the relationship that you have to close is because there are layers of this healing art, okay? Many, many, many layers. The first layer I wanna talk about because it's just come up in this conversation, not that they are chronological or in some sort of an order, but they're all just present. They're like a holistic circle, one holistic circle moving around the circle and mm -hmm. touching one another. One of them is this misunderstanding that strong women have to look like a man in order to fit in, okay? I cannot tell you how many women I've taught. When I first came to the States in 1985, I was teaching a class to women who were making $2 million a month on how to be more feminine. They have abdicated. So when we talk about this abdication process, a lot of it is in order for me to survive in a man's world, I cannot be tender. I cannot be social. I cannot be sensual. Mm -hmm. I have to leave all of those things in the bedroom. I cannot bring them into the boardroom. That's just one tiny scintillum of the conversation that women are going through these days. And some men are going through it. A man cannot be tender and a man cannot show his vulnerability. The truth is, I believe that our vulnerability is our greatest asset, whether we're a man or a woman. And, and when I, so sometimes when we do classes or when, when I do workshops, I get naked, like literally naked. Like I get on stage and I'm in my sexy underwear and I have a sheet around me and I say, I cannot ask you to get naked without me getting naked. And as leaders in the conversation of clothing, okay, which is what we're in, my job as an image therapist or my opportunity and my honor is to help you undress your spirit so you can learn to dress your body. So Paula, if you've spent 50 years guarding your femininity, mm -hmm. it's going to take a little time to unravel that. So be kind to yourself. The reason why I teach this stuff, I've been teaching this for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since I was a child. Patience. Patience is a huge part of this process. It's taken you 40 years, 30, 40, 50. I have women in my, in my workshops that are 85 years old and they sit in the front row and they sob because they say, Liana, where were you when I was a young woman? Why isn't this being taught in colleges? Why is nobody te teaching us? We need more access to our own self-scribing, self-authoring, self-affirming to this awareness that you're perfectly fine exactly the way you are. 
You're perfectly beautiful. So when I say this is a healing art, the healing art begins with being here in this moment, naked in front of the mirror, not looking at, but seeing what's there. What, what is it that's here? Saggy boobs. Okay, well, you know what? This is what's here. And the minute you can actually acknowledge what's here without it being a judgment, even the, the I have to dress like a man situation, or even the, oh my God, my hormones are going crazy and uh, I'm having a hard time with not having my period. What, it, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever that conversation is, first, first thing we want to be with it in order to heal it. Feelings are healing. And the truth of this whole conversation and the whole process is that most of us, we just want to run away from all that stuff. We don't want to be with it. Because being with it after 40, 30, whatever years it is, is so unbelievably painful that we think that if I'm going to feel that I'm going to die, who can, who can relate to that? Who can relate to the, if I really want to be with the truth of who I am? And the reason why clothing, or, clothing is so important in this conversation is because it's a tool. I promise you, each and every one of you on this call has a conversation. If I say, what's the first thing you remember about dressing when you were a child? What comes to your mind? What's the oldest thought you have? What's And it's not a thought, actually, because I'm going to ask you to think about it. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to feel it. Do you remember what that felt like? Do you remember what that felt like when your mother forced you to put this, this thing on and you didn't really want to wear it and you had to go to church and it was all stiff and disgusting and it didn't feel good? The truth is we don't wear clothes. We swim in them. We feel them. They're like a lover. Like you put on a cashmere sweater and it slides down your naked boobs and down your back and it's making love to this skin, to this body. And most of the world doesn't feel clothes that way. We buy clothes with our tactility, not with what we're seeing. We, we slide it on and we go, oh my God, that's so good. You take a pair of pants and you slide your foot in it and your foot goes in and then it slides up your booty and you're like, oh, ooh, that is so good. It's like that when you spoon with a lover in bed, you know, when that's like a fit and you just go, mm, that's so good. Like that. Clothes are like that. They're like a lover. So when you all say to me, color, style, this, I'm like, no, we're going to turn this whole thing around because clothing is your second skin. Your mate, your lover, your soulmate, you're the person that you want to be with. It's like, ah, it's a fit. When that fits, it's an amazing experience. And most people don't have a closet that's like that. Most people have orphanages. Tons of orphans in the closet. They don't have mothers and brothers and sisters and shoes to match, nothing. Nothing has to do with anything. They don't know each other. They come from different tribes. They've been sitting in your closet for ages. They talk to you every time you open your closet. Yagany, yagany, yag. Why have you bought me? Why have you paid $450 for me? And I'm still hanging here and there's tags on me and you never wear me and blah, blah, blah. And we, as women, lots of us, now men too, over 50, you start producing cortisol and adrenaline and estrogen goes down and it goes up. And it's like, you open the closet and there's a whole fucking factory happening in your head and going down your spine in your body that will not let you be you because it's all chemistry happening. And the chemistry happens from the thought comes out of your mouth, falls into your lap, and then it shows up in your life, in your closet, on your walls, in your refrigerator. 
in the lack of having an orgasm. I know you're going to hate this because I keep coming back to orgasms, but they're like so important. So when people say, oh, I had that food, it was orgasmic. It's because clothing is the same. When it's wonderful, and in my world, mm -hmm. it has to all be wonderful. Every single piece in your closet has to love you back. You can't just love it. Like my clients say, oh, but I love it. I'm like, okay, great. But if it doesn't love you back, it shouldn't be in your bed. It should not be in your closet. You would never let them touch your daughter. Don't do that. But then you put yourself into this twisted pretzel and you're like, oh, I have to do that. I'm like, no, you don't. Because if it's not good, meaning delicious, it's going to show up in your face. Look at all the people on the runway at the Oscars. Ugh, they're all, they don't look like themselves because that thing that they're wearing is like an incarceration of who they are. And then people go to the other end of the spectrum and all they want to wear is sweats. Okay, so we've just spent two years in our sweats. Nobody paid attention to their body. Our waistlines got bigger. People can't wear their shoes because they haven't worn shoes in two years. And now the world is opening up. And the truth is that this has now become the center of the universe for most people. How many of you are mentors and teachers in, on this call? Is anyone mentors, teachers? Paula, uh, okay, so Joanne, I know. Paula, what do you teach? Um, I teach women to navigate transition, major transitions in their life. Um, <laughs> And I, yeah. I can't wait to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> and really yes, to connect to their soul essence. So much of much of the same, the inward, it's the inner journey, the inner journey, knowing that everything comes from the inner. That's fabulous. Life. Fabulous. Fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> um, Leanne, hi. You have to unmute yourself. I've been wanting to ask you some questions. Yes. Because I can feel you over here. <laughs> No, it's good. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. T tell me why you joined us today. What was your impetus? Well, I heard you do um, one of the 20 minute ones way back when we had the retreat every oh, yeah. night or and then it turned years ago. Yeah. About <laughs> a year ago, a year ago. Yeah. And I thought it was very interesting and I'm going through transition in my life and I'm like um, decluttering and getting, I've gotten rid of like three quarters of my wardrobe. So I have a very small wardrobe now, but I'll be moving soon. And I'm just, and it's about, the, the reason why I tuned in is because I'm in a place, where, and my age, I'm a senior citizen now, and my body sorry, does look you? very different now. And I'm sorry, you know, you're not allowed to talk about my new client like that. You're what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a, well, you know, I, I'm 65. So Everything I'm 63. just gets like, Everything gets so crazy. I mean, I was fine 62, 63, 64, and then 65 was like just what? mind blowing. But anyway, I'm I'm okay no, with it. No, 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 no. Don't 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 just put that under the carpet. Okay. I would like no. to look if it's not language. No, we don't have to do it now, but if it's not languageable, it is not actionable. The reason why I want you to language and I want you to give me evidence for whatever that story is that you're holding is because that story that you're holding is now you are going to seek, you know, verification of that story. Yes. That's how we live our lives. Yes. You say it is, and so it is. So you're going to continue to seek verification for that story. And my suggestion would be that you don't do that because you're a beautiful, sensual, vibrant, gorgeous woman. You do not have my permission to talk about yourself like that. Yeah. So I got rid of all of my tank tops. I don't show my arms anymore, <laughs> even at the gym. Why? I mean, I just won't. I just oh. won't. It's just, I just won't do it. And every morning I say, well, yeah, I can get that little surgery thing. And I, I won't do that either. So I just cover it. I know it's it's one of those things. <laughs> Where do you live? I'm in New York. I'm not in Manhattan. I'm in New Rochelle. 
I'll be so moving how, back how, to Long Island. So can I ask you some questions? Yeah. How does that feel? It, it feels, um, as I feel like as long as I can cover it, it's okay. That's not what I'm asking. I know what you're asking. Um, it, <laughs> it, it, I mean, what's the alternative, you know? What I, I, what's the alternative? I'm not gonna feel bad about it. I just don't that's like it. Asking, that's not what I'm asking either. So how does it feel to give up on giving up? I, I it feels fine. I mean, you know, okay. I used to feel incredible, you know, when I before all this stuff started happening. I used to feel incredible, but uh, I'd have as much skin showing as possible. But I was very hooked into all of that, and now it kind of feels. I kind of feel a little free now that I don't. I mean, I know you look at it like I'm confining myself, but I feel free that I don't have to even worry about what it looks like anymore. Does that make sense? No? No. Yeah. I think she's friend. Oh, okay. Who? I thought she was giving me. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did I say? <laughs> it is pretty she, serious. She's <laughs> giving you a. <laughs> Dialed in here. <laughs> Oh, I don't think anyone ever had that effect on her. <laughs> so, 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 Leanne, while uh, while um, we lost, we lost. Um, yeah, Leanne, she'll probably come back. But, uh, but you and Paula are not far from each other, I think. Uh, really? Yeah. You think so? Yeah, and I'm and I'm living in Long Island now. So I heard you say that you're moving there. Yes, I'm moving up to Rocky Point. Okay, I know exactly where that is. So we, yeah. let's connect, Leanne. We'll connect okay, on. okay, that would be. Ah, that oh, there you are, Leanna. Oh, I just want you to know, Leanna. You, oh, no, you. She's oh, she's again. frozen. Oh, frozen again. Oh goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. We we became so Zoom dependent that uh, it yeah. uh, captures. Uh, <laughs> Maybe if we didn't no video. No, yeah, this you... is the only problem with this with this method of, of bringing people together. Right. Like Leon, like Liana says, we miss out on. I mean, like if if I had if I could be really comfortable being around other human beings, I'd be a hug therapist. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that there's this energy that I have that people like to be around, but it really works best when you know in person. And it's hard. It's harder to do it this way. I think. I think. But, I mean, I'm, sounds, I'm learning so much. Delightful. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm learning so much just from from having the opportunity to also to do this from my home. So, yeah, it goes both ways. I hope she comes back soon. Yeah. She's so animated. It's weird to see her frozen. <laughs> she, she's. Uh... It felt very intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, she's she's quite the. Okay, Hi. there you are. That's so interesting that it broke off when it did. <laughs> and, and it was like you Your you face. broke off and with the face I'm, expression. I'm we so had to, sorry. <laughs> we had to step did you, in. Did you, did you was I'm so second. sorry. So Leanne, I I'm um, I'm going to take you to the higher level of this work. Okay. <laughs> When there is that much energy attached to a thought, an action, a feeling, a conversation, a communication, there is something to be looked for. There's a lot of cheese down that road, okay? Just like the opposite of love is not hate, the opposite of love, does anybody know? What's the opposite of love? Like indifference, right? Indifference. The opposite of love is indifference. So if you don't really have a problem with it, Leanne, or anyone, I, I'm not even gonna use you as an example. I'll give you my example, okay? When there's a lot of charge on something and only you know when that is, even as a mentor and I have permission to go in and coach because I do not coach into a non-request, 
even as a mentor, I'm not the one who says, hey, this is what's happening to you. I let you choose the emotional scale because only you can tell yourself the truth. You can lie to me, you can lie to yourself, you can lie to other people. You will know as a student who's actually seeking, you will know. Like any one of you knows when you're, you know, saying something to yourself and you know there's something else meant. We all know it. And I know it because of the greatness of who you are as a human being. We're all born with supreme emotional intelligence. We were all born with it. It gets beaten out of us. So when there's a lot of charge on something, you know, you know to go look there. Those are the beautiful spaces in which we get to be awakened to the fact that there's something there for me to learn. And so when I say the work of image therapy, and I'm telling you this after 40 years of doing this, it's like, there are people who sit on a couch as a, at a therapist's office for 10 years and they don't get the work done. I'm going to tell you a, a, a little story. Can I, do I have time, time to tell a story? Yeah. We have 10 yeah. minutes. So I'm going to try to make this short. And this is a place where I can actually tell the story because I can't always tell it. It's a story of why and how this work is so deep and so important. And it goes so straight to the point. Okay. I'm in San Francisco, I'm talking on TV, a woman comes up later, I'm doing a little presentation, she shows up to the presentation, she has purple hair. She bends over the table and she says, Oh, Liana, I want to come and do this work with you VIP private. I'm like, Oh, my God, tell me about the hair. You don't have any silver hair. Why are you dyeing your hair? She goes, How do you know I don't have silver hair? Because I can see by the color of your skin because when this goes silver, this goes silver, this goes silver, everything changes. She goes, oh, I don't even know what my hair color is because I've been dyeing my hair since I was 12 years old. And she is about a hundred pounds overweight. I said, okay, interesting. If you want to come work with me, you have to let your hair grow out to three inches. I didn't need it. I needed for her to tell me if she was gonna do it. She's like, well, that's never gonna happen. I said, okay, then I'm not the right mentor. I said, Do, would you mind me asking why? She goes, I hate my hair. I hate it. I'm like, okay. Three or four months later, she calls me. Hi, Liana, it's Mary. I'm like, Mary, hmm. Mary with the purple hair. Oh, yes, I let my hair grow out. So she comes down. She brings her wardrobe, which looked like a Mexican fiesta, but she looked like a beautiful caramel, all brown and bronze and the exact opposite. Everything was the exact opposite to who she was. She sits down, I hold the brown up. She starts panting, she starts hating. She's like, that's disgusting. That's the color of shit, that's awful. <laughs> she screams and yells and falls to the ground. The more I hold up the brown, the more she has a reaction. She falls to the ground, she starts bleeding on the ground. This is about 20 years ago. I didn't know what to do. I get on the ground. I hold her. I hug her. I'm like, what are you seeing? What are you beating on? She goes, it's the color of shit. It's the color of shit. Get it away from me. And she basically has a nervous breakdown. And finally, she says, it's the color of the carpet my father raped me on. She was a young girl. He would rape her from behind, shove her face into this brown shack carpet. Her hair was short and brown, just like the shack carpet. When she turned 12 and got her period, he stopped touching her because he was afraid that she was gonna get pregnant. Every morning she would see her hair reminding her of the brown shack carpet in the mirror. And then she started dying it. She came to me when she was 45 years old, 100 weight, 110 pounds overweight masking herself in all the wrong clothes and all the wrong colors. She's sitting on the floor in my arms, crying. She says, Liana, I've been in therapy for 20 years. No one has ever gotten to this. I didn't even remember the story. So color, fabric, texture, smells, 
all have the agency and the capacity to unlock all of that. Your wrinkles have the capacity to unlock some of that. Having to shave one's head, God forbid, becoming sick, a man telling, telling you that he doesn't like your belly, anything can unlock trauma and pain and hurt. The non-acceptance of our body, this is why this is called the healing art of image therapy, the non-acceptance of our body is the most fundamental dis-ease that we have. And we can do something about that. So when there is that, that's where I know where to go look. That's where I know how to guide you. That's where I know how to guide myself. Even my 16-year-old granddaughter, who is already saying to me, Nana, I hate this, makes me cry. And it's not just about us and our parents. It's the whole world. So when there's that thing, you know where to go look. Yes, I only have a few minutes. Questions. I'm sorry that I got kicked off. <laughs> That's a hard story to tell at the end of a workshop, but it's a, it's a true story. And I have thousands of them, not just one. You know, uh, Leanne Cher was a, a very good client of mine. So was Diana Ross. We all deal with it. And it's not that I want you to deal with it. I, I am teaching this stuff so that women come around full circle and claim it. It's not aging, it's saging. You are becoming a sage. It is an honor and a privilege to get older. There are millions of people who don't. And we, the world needs us to be sages. We need to be wisdom mentoring the next generation. And we cannot do it if we hate our own bodies, especially as elders. That's just what I think. That's what I stand for. And I want you to come and stand with me. <laughs> I'm here. You got this big smile on your face. I'm already standing with you. I know you are. I, I love the... We we have uh, we have every week we have a founders talk on the community and uh, we said next week that we're going to talk about reframing tomorrow. Reframing. Um, yeah. Yes. So saging love, versus aging. I love that. Saging uh, versus aging. Yes. Yeah, but what I, I do that. want before we before we get knocked off, um, not knocked up, but knocked <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> I would like all of you to just give me one word for for today. One word. What's the one word that you can share? How was this for you? And you don't have to do one word. You can do one sentence. Go ahead. Brilliant. It was brilliant. Who, who's that? Oh, Jerome. Jerome. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and really profound. Brilliant, also say it. But if what was that? Oh, if it wasn't brilliant? No, I just, yeah, it was great. Very profound. Did you learn something? I did. And I, you know, I was thinking about growing up my mother always got me clothes that were too big for me and saying I would, and I think it was because, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. And so I could grow into it. And I spent all of my life growing mm -hmm. into clothes and never hadn't being thought about person. that until. Never until being today. the present. Yeah. That's yeah. like, Oh God, that's heartbreaking. Never yeah. being in the present. Yeah. 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 Who's next? All, all the senses. You expanded me out of just the visual, because when you asked me, what was my first memory? It was satin and velvet. It was the feel of this wonderful dress when I was a child. <laughs> and you caused me to thank my mother. That's beautiful. I love that. Because she actually had better taste in clothes for me than I did. And I used to reject them because I didn't want to be seen. I don't, and, and I can go, you know, do something else to... I'm not going to go into to why that probably was, but she actually was trying to the red coat, 
wear the red coat. Oh no, mama, I don't want to wear the red coat. Then and um, she just passed a couple of weeks ago. So it's just like this wonderful glowing kind beautiful. of feeling of beautiful. just reconnecting to her that she was such a positive influence. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, and I just kind of set that aside. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Devin, we didn't hear anything from you. I'm just getting over being sick. I'm feeling very quiet these days. So just absorbing. Um, I feel like my my relationship with clothes has really changed over the years, sort of like a year by year thing that I know Paula was sharing. And I can really relate to downing or like um, lowering my uh, femininity in a male dominated environment. I actually resulted in a lot of really cool pairs of pants and suits, um, sort of like dress suits. But yeah, I, I actually went to an energy healer in Minnesota before I moved to Arizona that had asked me, like, have you given up on your femininity or are you letting go? I was like, no, what are you talking about? And she's like, I just see like zero feminine energy in your, in your space. And I was like, okay. So I like bought a bunch of dresses and skirts again. And I was like, all right, here we go. And it's felt, it started to balance, but I think still finding like the, the rhythm of it I'm getting into, it still feels like it's all over the place sometimes. Yeah. But call me. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Devin has really fun style. We enjoy uh, seeing <laughs> seeing what you wear here. I, I'd yeah. like to share, going back to my earliest um, clothing memory, and I hadn't ever done that before, I think, but in kindergarten and first grade, every day I had to wear a dress or a skirt and the fancier, the better. And my mom started, nope, save that. Nope, you're ruining all these dresses. You can't get dressed up for school. You can't, and so... I found myself dressing plainer and plainer as I got older. And it's hard to like, even when I get a nice piece of clothing, it's like, no, I'll save that. I'll save it for a special occasion. Like, like I'm not the special occasion, right? Life, every day is a special occasion. Mm -hmm. You know, now on Instagram, they have these little clips, their wheels, their reels they're doing where a woman's in a gown and she says, I'm just going to my mailbox. Would you like to <laughs> I mean, that's my life, you know, at the supermarket in a gown. And people go, wow, where are you going? I'm like, to the supermarket. <laughs> yeah, who's next? I just wanted to say thank you, especially for your, you, the way that you deliver, the way, the way that you connect in this more sort of authentic, frank, funny way. This work is, you know, it can be, it can be, drudgy and you just bring this um this i guess theater to it that i really enjoyed and it felt expansive for me and um and thank you thank you thank you thank you for having it that way thank you for having it that way a lot of people don't have it that way you know laughter is learning laughter cements learning so if i can get you to feel i've done my job and if, if you felt deeply today in this session, then do me a favor and raise your hand if you felt deeply. I guess I've done my job. That's all I'm here to do, you know? One of my mentors, this is the last thing I'll share with you. One of my mentors used to say, I used to go and say, I hate this. And she's like, I'm always waking people up and, you know, and they're all pissed and they're pissed because I'm a thorn in people's sides. Like I'll come up with shit and people go, mm, don't say that. And Cause I'm not for coddling. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get up under you like a boulder and you're not going to like it. It's kind of like a G string. It's uncomfortable, but necessary. So, and he would say, what do you mean? And I say, well, you know, I come in and I say shit and people don't like it. He said, look, Liana, your life is like this. This is who, who you're meant to be. And this is your life. You walk into a room, someone's sleeping, the curtains are closed. You come in, you browse in, you rip open the curtains, you open the windows, you let the light in, you're like singing and people are deep asleep and they don't like it. And then they're going to be mean and angry for a little bit and then they're going to get used to it. So if I poked you the wrong way, please accept my apologies but know that it's always for the greater good. And I have clients who always say to me, 
the first time I met you, Liana, you were so damn fierce. And then I found out you're so loving. The fierceness is to wake you up. And I promise you that I hold you with so much love because this is, this is my life's work. This, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so thank you for having me. And Carol, I can't see your face, but I just wanted to say hi and bye or no, if you can come on camera, if not. Who else wants to say one more sentence and then we'll go. I, I wanna say that um, since early in my life, body image has always been a challenge. And I think I passed it on to my uh, three beautiful girls with um, my own uh, uh, challenges. And it's, I think body image is such a profound um, workplace for us to see where we, you know, where we have um, challenges yeah. and, and stuff. Yeah. So I, uh, I commend you and love you and I'm so grateful for you today. I'm grateful for all of you. Thank you all for making time to be here today. It's very special to me that you, you have millions of things to do and you all showed up. So thank you for showing up, listening, hearing, letting some of my words in. And these were just seeds. They're all going to bloom. You, you, might, you all might have very interesting dreams tonight. So <laughs> I'm going to wake up and write them down. And I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Liana. Thank you. Much love. Ciao. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.